everybody. This is Leslie with Black Dog Vintage and I am super excited to be here and bringing you my latest haul. Um, I won a few different um, uh, online auctions and so these are the lots from the online auctions and I will be bringing most of this to my next live sale or my next two live sales I should say um, and those will be on Wednesday uh, at 6 p.m. Eastern, Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Those are the times I do all of my vintage sales. And so you will see most of these pieces. I should say most of these pieces because my channel members do have the option of pre-sale. Uh, so they can um, pre-purchase any of these items. So if you are not a channel member yet, it is something to look into. So that is always um, a good option if you are maybe not able to come to a live or something. So definitely uh, definitely check out a, uh, a membership if that is something that you are maybe interested in. Um, the first thing I want to go through is... Um, I've really been into rings lately. Um, if you've been with me on any of the lives that I go to, you can see that I've been buying rings a lot. Um, and I've, that hasn't, uh, that is definitely something that I've been doing with um, my pre or with my auction wins uh, for all of you guys. So this one came in. It is a Nikki Butler. Um, let's see, Nikki Butler. Uh, Geo 925 ring size six and a half um, and I have found um, I actually had some of these at my last auction um, last week and look at the colors in this there's like a little pink flash in here and um, you can see on the inside it is marked NB and uh, I did test these and uh, this, even though these are seeing six and a half or whatever sizes, they are slightly off. Um, this is actually more of like a six and three quarters. Um, but this is a beautiful, it's almost like an olive green, kind of a druzy, and with that little splash of pink. It is absolutely a stunning, stunning piece. And uh, there is the number, oh, didn't realize that her rings are numbered like that. So 136 out of 1800. Um, that's kind of interesting. But isn't that just gorgeous? So that is one of the rings that I got. And um, yeah, this one is gorgeous. Absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. Um, this is a really cool one. This is um, so seven and three quarters. This is actually sterling and shell and look at that look at that shell oh my gosh and that's kind of a nice little tarnished sterling and let's see and it truly measures more like an eight so these are kind of like a quarter size off um so i would say and don't mind that my fingers i've been working hard moving furniture doing all kinds of stuff here in my house and so um, as long as you guys can forgive me for that, we will look at lots of beautiful jewelry. But look at that shell, oh, the colors, the shape, everything. It is super cool. And that is sterling silver as well. And it says 14.7 grams. I didn't double check the weight on these, but I have no reason not to believe it. This is a Sajin, um, and it is adjustable, kind of, even though it says it is. Um, and it's got a garnet. Um, and it's really super cool. Now, it says adjustable, but I kind of disagree a little bit. So, you could potentially move this so it kind of becomes a bypass. Um, you can see how it's marked Sajin on the inside. 925. Beautiful garnet. And then that is kind of a coin or something along those lines on the inside look at that on the sides beautiful detail with this i really feel it's beautiful detail it is just a beautiful ring um but i mean you could definitely move that so it bypasses otherwise it is sitting at a nine so i mean it's 
it's so it's larger um it's super cool on though so you can make it larger than a nine for sure um but yeah i like that one super cool super pretty um and unique i, mean, I like i don't think there's a sajin piece that i've seen that i don't like to be honest um, this is one of the amber rings. The other amber ring um, sold. Actually, um, there's two ambers that I still have. There's two that sold. This is a super cool one. Look at that. I love this. It's very simple. This one says size 8.25, um, 2.8 grams, um, more like an 8.5, and... Um, that is how it's going to look, but look at that. And it is true amber. It's te I tested it. Look how cool that is. Amazing. That's amazing. You got a little bit of something in there, seeds or something. And then, whoop, it goes flying. Um, but that's a really cool piece. Let's see. It's marked anything on the inside. 925 there. That's it's beautiful. Very almost like modernist looking. And then oh, those are earrings. Let's do the other. So this is another, this is actually a green amber ring. And it's um it says eight and a half. And it, this one actually measures a nine. And look at that. It is a gorgeous kind of glitzy, sparkly green amber. And there we go. Put that on. That's so pretty. Um, seven and a half grams on that one. Just so beautiful and unique. Green amber is super cool. Um, I don't see it very often, but that is green amber. And very pretty. And then I did get one pair of earrings from this company, from this auction. And these are kind of, reminds me of like little light bulbs. A little twist and little light bulb. And there's the matching one. So 4.5 grams on these. Very nice lightweight earrings. So that is those. I thought those were really fun. So fun little sterling silver rings. Um... I couldn't resist and most of them fit me so I and that's kind of how I buy rings because if they fit me then I can keep them if nobody wants them so um, because as you can see I love my rings and that is the way that it is um, and then I won um, a huge lot ooh, as my piece goes as my desk goes flying a huge lot of jewelry me kind of back up on this huge lot of jewelry and this is a big huge tray of what I want and I actually want more than this but this is everything that I I guess is deemed worthy of going into one of my lives there's um, a lot of other pieces of jewelry that will either go into maybe a buy it now live that I keep on saying, saying I'm going to do and I just haven't done it yet. Or it'll go into one of my mystery bags that will be available or that are available actually right now on my website where it's all vintage jewelry. But um, they're either pieces that aren't going to go on my lives or... You know, they're smaller brooches or, you know, brooches that might not have, like, the bling that these pieces do. All right. So, um, let's just start, I guess, at the top. Um, all right. I'm going to kind of bring this back in to regular. So, this is just a really cool bangle. Um, brass. Um, it has, like, a very, like revival feel to it so really pretty flowers and um it has you know it's kind of big um so anybody can pretty much put this on this is just a really nice piece almost like a staple piece so that is a great piece right there um then i 
fell in love with this. Very 1960s. Um, this is not marked, but look at this charm bracelet. It is a gold chain with like a whitewash gold and milk glass or milky bead um, uh, kind of chunky charm bracelet. I love this. Look at that. Look at those metal accents with the kind of like the kind of like the whitewash look to it. There's your milk glass. There's some milky lucite beads. This is all just so much fun. And um, there is no there's no name on it. At least not that I saw when I was going through it last night. Um, yeah, I don't see. Yeah, no name. Look at that. So amazing. It's just so amazing. And uh, 1960s all the way. Love it. I just absolutely love it. Um, this brooch is very cool. It's old. You can see the, the back of it. You can see how old that is. It's got a little hand forged pin, a C clasp. Very, very, very unique. Um, and I think that is Cyrus. And this is pretty heavy duty. You can see how thick that pin is. And it's just super cool. Um, this is not Damascene or anything like that Toledo wear. It's, I don't, I'm trying to do a little more research into this. I found one that was very similar that was sold at an auction, like not an eBay auction or anything like that. And it was, um, it was described, um, and the technique was not described, but it was the description said that it was 200 years old. I do not believe that. I do not believe that based on the hinge or anything like that, but, um, I'm I'm not sure. I, I want to do more research on this one. I feel like this is just a really cool and interesting piece. And that was part of one of the um, brooch lots in here. Um, that's just a cool cluster brooch. I love the pink. I just think that's fun. Um, it's got the pink prong set um, stones right up on the top. It's just It's just a fun piece. Um, this is cool. I've had this brooch a few times, and it is actually a very highly desirable Sarah Coventry piece. Um, and this is kind of a throwback to um, the Austrian fruit brooches that were big um, probably about 20 years prior to this um, being released. And this is just a really pretty one. Uh, really good condition. And this was probably released out in the, maybe back in the 1970s, I would say. And uh, yeah, this is just a nice Sarah Coventry piece. <clears throat> um, here is a beautiful, beautiful kind of rust color Nevette um, brooch with the AB stones. And it is just absolutely a stunning, stunning piece. There, it's a little bit better. Stunning, stunning piece. And I just absolutely love the colors. I love the AB in there. It's just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Um, and then we have a pink, a beautiful, beautiful pink in there. And um, got a little pink, kind of that Barbie pink. And uh, yeah, that's very, very pretty. And definitely, I would say Austrian in this one. And then here is a beautiful blue. Look at that. Look at that color blue. That is just stunning. That is just an absolutely stunning piece. And we have the blue Nevats accented with blue AB. And that is just yummy. And look at the dimension on that. It is just one, two, three, four, five layers of stones. And that is just gorgeous. Gorgeous. And then I've got a green. 
beautiful deep emerald green. Again, lots of layers. There is the back. A little bit of wear to the back, but you know what? It, it works. It doesn't matter. The stones are perfect and no one's going to see the back. Look at that. Just beautiful. Um, and then here is a clear piece. Also all prong set layered. That is the back. It is beautiful. And let's see. Here is a, is this Giovanni? Um, no, what does this say? Can't really read that. Something co, but really pretty little tulip. Well, pretty little tulip brooch in that pale yellow and green. Very nice condition in that. And gotta love that. Um, and then check out that. Woo! Check out that color. Beautiful deep root beer with the AB. That's the back of it. You don't see anything like this very often. That is gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. Um, little micro mosaic. This is a really nice micro mosaic. This is very, very well done. And it is made in Italy. Look at the quality on this one. This is a very old one. This is a very old one. I really like this. Look at that. God, that's a really nice one. Then of course, a large AB. Very beautiful, large AB brooch. And this is a very nice piece. Now this is done with marcasites. And you don't see these with marcasites very often. And I like this. Now there is a little scratch on the one pearl. Um, well, maybe actually it wasn't a scratch. Maybe it was just a little smudge when we got it off. Yeah, hey, that works. So these are some marcasites and it's actually kind of like almost an inverted. Um, so those are set in there nicely and they're not, doesn't look like they're gonna come out anytime soon. And so that's nice and it's done in pot metal. And uh, all the stones are present. So that's a nice little piece. Um, let's switch gears for a second. This is more like 80s. And this is a... Oh, this is Monet. This is nice. So here's a Monet necklace. Let me get a measurement on this one. Um, it can be... 15 to 17 inches and let me see here um if i have a yeah here's my neck a little short neck so this is very pretty look at that oh i got it there we go look at that very pretty very simple little 15 to 17 inch necklace choker and triple strand, but I love how it goes through this. Isn't that beautiful? But I am a huge Monet fan. It has triple gold plating. It is, I mean, you're not going to get the quality anywhere else. Monet is just, to me, one of the best. And I think it's just going to be more and more desirable. And these gold necklaces are something that you're not going to find anywhere. I mean, you're not going to find anything that's made like this in anything new and they're timeless. They're just timeless. Like you can wear them now and they're going to be just as beautiful, just as nice as they are, um, you know, as they were back in like 1970, 1980. Um, and then here we have, uh, 
This is a 17 inch chain. And look at this, it's on just a plain 17 inch chain. But look at this, it's an intaglio. It looks like we got a little, is that a scratch? Or a hair in there? Oh, it's a scratch in the glass. A little scratch in the glass there, but that's okay. I think on, you're not gonna really notice it, but look at beautiful little intaglio pendant with the milk glass. I do need to clean that a little bit, but it is such a pretty piece. Um, on the neck, if we put this on the neck, we're gonna look at something that looks like this. And that is going to be very pretty on. Very pretty, nice bold little cameo. I would wear it, that's for sure. Um, and this is another Monet, and this one I do need to clean looking at it now. And this is white, um, and it can be uh, 20 to 22 inches. But look at these beads, these beautiful white beads. And then this diamond-shaped pendant. Um, part of me thinks maybe I should wait till the summer again, hold on to it, but it is Monet and um, it just needs a little bit of a clean, but oh my gosh, look at these beads. It's just fabulous. Very 1960s, early 1970s piece. It's super cool. I'm going to have to look at my Monet book, see when I can date that one. I think that's super cool. Um, okay, back to some brooches and other pieces. I got oh, so many cool brooches here. Look at this one. This is a gorgeous piece. Look at that. Beautiful. These are all open back navettes, which are some of my favorites. Fall colors, which we're moving into that season. And look at that. Oh, aren't you just in love? Little spray. Very Juliana-esque, but I do not believe this is a Juliana. This is three inches long too. So it's pretty bold and nice to mention on this. But if you look back here, there's really no telltale signs of it being a Juliana other than the pin. But yeah, this is just absolutely a stunning, stunning piece. And just so gorgeous, so gorgeous. And then check out this 1930s beauty with the red and the crystal, the clear crystal. Oh my gosh, Oop, looks like I need to replace, Oop, replace one. A couple of these I kept in my tray. Um, this one I did miss. Um, I kept on my tray because I know I needed to replace one, but they are just so beautiful and they're gonna be quick fixes, but this is a quick fix with just a single little stone to be replaced. So hopefully I'll get that done prior to my live, either Wednesday or Saturday. Um, but these are open back red stones. Absolutely a stunning piece. And I'm going to set that one aside. Um, check out this bracelet. Cool little AB stone bracelet. Um, this one is marked. But I can't remember what it was. This one is marked. Oh, Sarah Coventry. What's the most Sarah Coventry surprises me? I'm not always a fan of this finish, but I am a fan of these big, bold AB stones and this link. This link is super cool. Um, just the, it's like a ribbon or it just flows. And so when you wear it on or put it on, it's got this cool, like, I don't know, just this cool little look to it. And it gets very timeless. Again, this is a very timeless piece. And it's got that AB stone, so it's gonna go with everything. And you know, it's a light gold, so stack that with some gold, you know, brighter gold, stack that with some silver. It's gonna go with everything, absolutely everything. And you've got a timeless piece right here. There's no reason why you can't wear this with everything. And it's a beautiful, probably late 1960s um, Sarah Coventry piece. And it is stunning, absolutely stunning. And I think, you know, everybody needs a piece like that in their wardrobe. And here's a beautiful collector's piece right here. 
Um, this is Austrian, if I were to say anything. This is a beautiful, whew, kind of bright, beautiful Austrian piece. Oh, let's see, get that out of there. Beautiful Austrian piece. And look at those deep emerald greens. The AB, there is the back. I could not find this as a Juliana. I don't believe that it is, but I am going to search because it does have a couple a couple of clues that I think maybe it could be, but I don't think it is, but it's got this little dog tooth, you know, rim around the center stone. It's just got some really beautiful, just some beautiful, beautiful look, just a beautiful look to it. So it's pretty heavy too. So maybe, I mean, it's got the little pin stop, um, but it doesn't have any other, no other telltale signs of it being a Juliana. Woo. Um, it does not have figure eight puddling. It doesn't have open back navettes, which it doesn't have to have that. The only thing it has to have is this pin stop right here. Um, and this, you know, this type of backing, but um, that's it. You know, we all know. Um, but it does have a very messy solder job right here. Um, but that is not something that I haven't seen before with a Juliana, so who knows? Um, but it is gorgeous. That is the most beautiful emerald green uh, I've seen. And that center stone is just lovely. And yeah, that's just a beautiful, beautiful brooch and nice dimension on it. Um, this piece I love. I do need to replace, I think it's just one tiny, tiny, eensy beansy beansy if that's a word uh incy weensy little stone um and i'm not even sure where it's at i think it's oof. where is the stone i have to replace right there i have to replace the stone right there but check this out this is a fascinating piece this is made by arthur pepper a-r-t arts um, if you're familiar with Arthur Pepper, oh my gosh, stuff is amazing. It's He's very prolific. Um, beautiful Christmas brooches, figurals, um, enamel work, um, and then some really cool kind of, you know, rhinestone brooches, but usually they're in stars or something like that, and this is of no exception. But what's cool about this brooch um, is that the inside underneath all this beautiful filigree and rhinestone and layering, that's velvet. <laughs> that is velvet. And that to me is so cool. So I almost think this is kind of like a, a Christmas piece, but mm, I don't know. What do you guys think? Is this Christmassy to you? It almost seems very Christmassy to me, but I love this. I absolutely love this. I think this could be worn year round. I think this would be cool on a jacket lapel. Um, could be good on a hat. Um, but I think on a sweater or a lapel, this would be fantastic. And this is definitely a piece that could be worn by men or women. I know a lot of men are wearing brooches. My son has worn them on, um, his suit coat before. Um, you know, he recently went to a wedding with one on and uh, happily said that he was representing my business, uh, which I thought was pretty cool. But that is a stunning piece and would look amazing uh, on either men or women. Um, so this is another one, very simple, little filigree flower, but I thought that was really pretty. And um, that could be worn uh, on anything as well. And what's nice about this, very light. So you could put this on a lighter, um, even a blouse or a light cardigan, uh, a light sweater, and you're not going to ruin it. Um, I do love my light brooches because they are very um, easy to wear on something uh, and not ruin something. Because when you have something heavy, like a piece like this, um, you can't put it on a lightweight um, piece of fabric. And 
I think we need to remember that when we're wearing brooches that these pins can actually do damage to a lot of fabrics. And so you have to always watch what you're putting it on. And it's really nice sometimes if you wanna wear something lightweight and decorate it with um, a brooch or something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, keep conscious of, you know, what you're putting on. Um, and so when you can do a bold brooch as opposed to this is the next one we're going to look at. This is a small one, also very lightweight. But sometimes you want to do something a little bit more bold. You can do something like this as opposed to something small. This might be kind of glitzy, which is cool. But this is nice and bold and you can use that because it's lightweight. Anyway. Uh, maybe I'm talking too much. Um, but this is so pretty too. Look at that. Very subdued, very, a very lightweight, um, a very, you know, it's got that sparkle. It's, it's very pretty, um, but it's also very, um, you know, very minimalistic and this is beautiful. And uh, unfortunately, this is not signed, but I have, yeah, I've seen very similar pieces that like this that are done in sterling or in gold fill and, these are, uh, this one is not, but this one is just so pretty with those really pretty like uh, aquamarine or, you know, blue topaz color stones. It's just so beautiful. Okay, what's next? Uh, this one I love. This is very old, probably, again, 1930s. Um, and this is missing a few different stones as well. Um, it's one that I'll have to really like study to see which stones are missing and this might be a little bit harder to find stones that are not going to stand out um when i do the repair but this is also done in pop metal it's in excellent condition other than i think there's a you know those couple stones missing um and i think there's one right there in the nose um and where else? Might not be that bad. Oh, one right here. Um, and that's it. Not that bad. But this is very similar to, there is a Trafari Alfred Philippe with a single horse head. Uh, this is not like this. So this was probably an actual knockoff back in the day um, of the same brooch um, or something similar back in the day of the same brooch. But um, this is from the 1930s. I did do a little bit of research um, and this is actually um, kind of a popular piece uh, from back then. I've, I did find a few online. There is a little bit of enamel wear on here, but boy, is this not a pretty, pretty piece. And if you are an equestrian or horse lover like I am, um, this is a great piece to have in your collection. Um, part of me is thinking maybe I'll keep it, but if I keep every brooch that I love, that is uh, that's a dangerous thing. Um, and then same with this one. This is an absolutely beautiful, beautiful piece. There are a lot of marcasites missing, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this. If I'm going to even try to fix it or not, um, I'm not really sure, but there are a lot of stones missing out of this. But oh boy, do I love the design of this. Um, so what do I do? You guys tell me, what do I do? There are so many marcasites missing. Um, do I sell it as is? Would anybody be interested as is? This piece is just phenomenal. It's phenomenal. It is so beautiful. Um, and I don't know. I don't know what to do with it. Um, Marcosites are very, for me at least, they're more difficult to replace than a regular stone, but I don't know. You tell me and look at this one. Love the pink. I just love the pink. Look at the pinks. The prongs are pink. So darn cute. That is the back. This is a very old brooch and it is adorable. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, saving one of the bests for last. Um, and then look at this. This is a beautiful little snowflake. It's got little pearl accents. Um, look at that. Beautiful. Very unique. Very cool piece. That's the back of it. Um, 
and cool little links. It's it's older, probably like, I don't know, maybe 1950s or 60s. And it's just very simple. And um, I don't know, I think it's just, it's, it's a good piece. It's just a, a, something that is a good staple. It's a good staple piece. And look at that, look at that on. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And what else do I have? Um, here is a nice little cluster in black. And that is the back. Very nicely done with the large and the small beads. Very simple. Can't go wrong with that. Um, I have some beautiful flowers, enamel flowers like that. And I got, I want a whole lot of enamel flowers. We've got, a, I think one of these is Giovanni. Yeah, I think that's a Giovanni. And look at that beautiful blue. Those are beautiful. That's a beautiful piece right there. That's a, it's a very old enamel flower. You can tell from the back. Beautiful, older enamel flower. Um, here's a really cool one that is in both silver and gold. Kind of a cool, neat looking one. And look at this big, huge black enamel flower. Little bit of wear on the inside, but I actually think that looks kind of cool. And uh, this one is, oh, this one's a, traf wow, that's a trafari, which I actually didn't know that trafari did these enamel flowers like that. So I'm going to have to look that one up. Um, and then I've had these probably 50 times, but these little violets, um, or pansies maybe, or violets, and these are made in Austria. These are always so pretty. These are probably 1930s, early 40s, and some of them have rhinestones in the center, some don't. This one doesn't, but so pretty, so, so pretty. Um, here's another, I believe this is a newer brooch, but this one looks, it's done in pot metal, but it is a newer piece, little fan. Um, I'm going to still wait on my favorite brooch. Um, okay, this is a beautiful, more like 80s contemporary gold necklace. But check out those links. Super cool. And let's get a measurement on this one. Super fun. And it is uh, 18 inches at the longest, 16 at the shortest. And uh, let me see here, what do we got? That's what it's gonna look like. Let me back this up a little bit. That's what it's gonna look like. So pretty, look at that. I just really like that, that's pretty sweet. That's a cool looking one. And then this other necklace is really cool too. Let me measure it before I show you because you know the anticipation is where it's at. Um, so this one's 16 inches, a little fold over class. This is definitely 80s. Um, and I love these kind of gripois looking stones in the front. Look at that, isn't that cool? Not marked. This is no, no markings on this. And then it does have some matching earrings that go with it. So, how ah, how cool is that? So, very, almost like very like Yves Saint Laurent or something like that looking. So, kind of kind of fun. And um, last but not least for the brooches. Now, I do have some cufflinks from this lot too. Um, for the brooches, let me show you. Look at that. Now, ah, this is a Weiss. So this is a Weiss, this is this is a really cool looking Weiss. Um, it's gonna go on a diamond side from the way that the, the uh, pin is. It is marked Weiss right back there with the copyright. And look at this, this is probably 1960s, absolute early 60s, late 50s, but probably more like early 60s. It has um, kind of a gunmetal frame to it and it is super cool this is a cool little recessed stone there nice big bulbous uh cabbage on there so beautiful 
and lovely. And I uh, really like this one. Very interesting. And this is real because, you know, I had that counterfeit one last week. And uh, this is a real Weiss. And it is beautiful. Beautiful. A couple little teal stones to kind of set that off. A little uh, AB one, but only one AB, which is sometimes uh, less is more. And that one is definitely a less is more piece. Um, and then I have... Uh, some cufflinks and these cufflinks I kind of wanted to see whether or not these would glow and look at the whole oh, look at that they do so some uranium glass cufflinks how cool are those these are the fold over style and uh, these are not marked with any maker or anything like that but they are pretty a sweet little uranium glass cufflinks and then here's some with just art glass cabochons and these are, uh, correct quality is what it says. Interesting, but cool little art glass cabochons. Um, here's some with what looks like glass, or glass um, inlay right there. I'm pretty sure that's glass, we'll double check. Yeah, that's just glass inlay. So very pretty there. Uh, this is Swank. And then it also says Sterling. And I don't know. I mean, maybe. Does not feel like Sterling. I'll test these before the live. But it is a very pretty, like, maybe a resin inlay over the over the metal. It's pretty. Um, and then this is also a swank. And that is a really pretty, almost like a moon glow. Oops. So those are all from the auction lot that I got over the weekend, this last weekend. And um, I will also have uh, many, many, many pieces from my consignment collection. So um, if you have requests of what you would like to see, uh, I will bring them. Um, I have plenty of things like Alice Cavanis, Trafari, uh, plenty of Julianas, so many Julianas. I have so many Miriam Haskells. Uh, I have Signer. Um, I believe I still have some Jomaz and um, lots of Weiss as well from my consignment collection. Um, and uh, lots of unsigned beauties. So definitely, if you have requests that you would like me to bring to uh, the live from my consigner, just let me know. Go ahead and just put that in the comments, and I can uh, always go ahead and bring those as well, or styles of jewelry, you know, if you want to see um, more brooches, more necklaces, uh, earrings, dress clips, uh, fur clips, anything like that, just let me know in the comments and I can definitely do that. Um, or feel free to email me or text me or anything like that. Um, and I can do that as well. I am adding more pieces into my website and you can find a link to that in my, um, my reg, my homepage for my YouTube, or, uh, you can find, uh, you know, links to pieces uh, right below this video. And I also have mystery bags that are restocked uh, for the video uh, underneath the, the, you know, the video as well. You can see the mystery bags and uh, those will be full of vintage jewelry, all wearable or resellable. $45 for a quart uh, bag full of vintage jewelry and it is free shipping so you can get a link to that below as well and uh, yeah definitely uh, I hope to see you on my live I've got lots of beautiful pieces and uh, yeah it'll be fun 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 join the pack the black dog vintage pack we have so much fun and uh, it'll be a great time so don't forget uh, Wednesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern, Saturdays at 4 p.m. Eastern, and I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Love you all, and thanks for watching. We'll see you later.